to Howard University. Yes. Uh, it's such a prestigious university. And yes. So many great people have come from that. Um, what did that mean to you? That was an excellent experience for me. It gave me so much pride in being a black woman. It gave me so much pride in the university, the education that I got, the uh, experiences that I got, and just knowing that you can overcome um, anything that's put up against you because you have the work ethic, because you have the education, because you come from a rich history. So it just, it was a, a wonderful experience. And there's so many people in my industry that went to Howard University, that went to uh, HBCU, so it's a, it's a great connector. Research shows that um, women aren't as comfortable speaking up or challenging. So one of the things I'm always eager to know is when you do face a difficult personality, do you have a secret you could maybe share with us oh. that would help <laughs> other women? <sighs> You know what? I have to take a breath, be calm. A lot of times I will go into the bathroom eat at work, wherever I am, and just really, really breathe because I've worked with a lot of challenging people in front of the camera, behind the camera. So it's really listening, be, being able to listen. And you do stand up for yourself because you have to feel good about what you do and feel good about yourself. So I think it's your intention and your tone, really taking a breath so you can get your point across in being balanced instead of yelling and screaming and, and being um, erratic. So it's really, I think, for, for me, it's taking that breath and being calm. And, and sometimes you don't have to say anything right away. I could say something hours later or the next day, like sleeping on it to say, you know what? We have a situation that's really bothered me. We need to talk about it. We need to make adjustments. So, because because then you'll you'll have self press self you'll self preserve when you do that, and you need that so that you can stay healthy and continue to work the long hours that you do, and to deal with all the personalities that you have to deal with. One of the things that um, our recent conversations socially have opened up is the inequality in access. Yes. And that's simply a reality. I've spoken to lots of women who have said that um, they have to work harder to get the same recognition. Yes. So I was wondering for you, how has that been? And what would you advise young women who want to follow in your footsteps? Um, yes, we do have to work harder. But I think if it's your passion and it's something that you want to do, you are going to work harder, but you're going to enjoy it. And I think to just stay on your path. And it turns into the challenges make you stronger. Rita, I've done a lot of interviews with um, women in all aspects behind the camera. And it seems to me that women of color have a little bit more of a challenge getting yes. access and running departments. Yes. So, how were you able to segue um, into being the head of a department like you are? Oh, that's a great question. I, I've, I've been, I've worked with a lot of great people. So working with those people it has built my resume that led me to different levels in my career. And so with the hard work that I put in and working different, different levels in the costume department from working as an intern to a PA to a costumer to doing set to a supervisor so working all those things and and the people that I've uh, come across it put me and right opportunity to go to the next level of head of the department. People who are successful always downplay their skill like you just did. <laughs> they know it's just hard work. I think that the people who are successful also have a, a skill in being persistent. Was there something that you did that um, allowed you to follow your dream? Did you have to ask for it? Did you have to push for it? Other than working hard, what did you do? Persistence, for sure. I stayed persistent. I stayed working hard. There was a lot of no's. 
and still with the no's, I stay persistent and my faith is very strong. So staying persistent and even taking jobs that I knew would lead to something more and it could be a smaller job, I would still take the job because I know that it's a great learning experience and each job is different and what you could glean from it. So persistence for sure. And just even with the, even with the nose, I keep moving forward. And even with uh, the long hours and really tired, just keep pressing, keep pressing forward. As I mentioned earlier, we're having conversations and doors are opening and hurts are being revealed. Um, what advice do you give to um, maybe a woman of color who doesn't think that this is a field that she can succeed in, other than working hard and just going at it? Are there some specific steps to give her confidence to say, I belong here? I would say you have to trust in yourself and you have to look at other black costume designers who are successful and doing well and know that because they did it and they set the tone and they paved the way that you could do it too. And to just keep fighting and to, to keep moving forward, to go up for the job. Even if you don't think you could do it still, you, your presence has to be known to go up for the job or if you have to take a lesser position and you feel that you're qualified, but it puts you in the position to move forward, then take that position. But I think there's, there, there, there are black women and men that are very successful. It's not a lot, but it's gonna be more because my advice to that black person, person of color, is to continue to move forward and not to give up at all. It, it, you, you can't stop the train. You just have to keep the momentum. That's great advice for all of us. Many, many years ago. And that's how I learned the business. I just stuck with it and just learned everything.